And now, NRA Executive Vice President, Wayne LaPierre. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks for coming. You know, we Americans, we breathe freer air. We live freer lives. We have more opportunity from the day we're born than anyone else on the face of the planet. Other countries have tried to duplicate us. No one has really been able to. And it's because of those freedoms that we have in the Constitution, the Bill of Rights. The United States of America is the greatest achievement in personal freedom in the history of mankind. We're the first nation that was founded not on a race, not on a religion, and not on a royalty, but on a set of God-given freedoms and inalienable rights. We're founded on liberty. That's why the Declaration of Independence is the founding and first legal document in our legal code. We're about liberty, not rights granted to the people from the government, but inalienable rights protected from government intrusion. When I think of the NRA, I think of freedom, citizenship, patriotism. I think of core American values. When I see an NRA hat, it's a way of defining yourself. I know who you are. I know you believe in the unique benefits of American freedom. I know you believe our freedoms make us stronger, make us better. Our way of life is better. Our Second Amendment makes us better. And I know something else. I know you're never going to submit, succumb, surrender, or be marginalized. We're about our membership and giving them voice. Corporations can't control us. The media can't control us. Politicians can't control us. We're there to fight on principle. So I hope you'll think about joining this great organization that defends the very essence of what our great country is all about. And I'm glad you're here with us. Let's open up for some questions. <laughs> yes, sir. There's a lot of talk in the media these days about how America wants more gun control. Is there any real truth to that? Yeah, you know, every poll that I see out of the American public, if you ask them a simple question, do you think we need more gun laws or better enforcement of the laws on the books? Every single time, by an overwhelming majority, the American public says better enforcement of the laws on the books. I and mean, you have places like Chicago. We're all reading about the crime going in Chicago right now. You know Chicago is dead last in the United States in terms of enforcement of the federal gun laws against drug dealers with guns, gangs with guns, and felons with guns. The city and the state system are in shambles. I think there's an average of about 79 people a year that end up being convicted under one of the local gun laws in Chicago. Believe me, we could dramatically make Chicago safer tomorrow morning and every other city in the safer if they would simply do what they did in Richmond, Virginia in the 90s, which was the third most violent city in the country that time. And you had this young federal prosecutor there that said, here's the deal. Every time I catch a drug dealer with a gun, a gang member with a gun, I'm going to prosecute him 100 percent of the time. He cut crime with guns by 70 percent in that town the very first year just by doing that. We need to do that all over the country because that's what will make this country safer. Yeah. There are thousands of laws and regulations on the books right now. And my question is, is why do the politicians want to create more laws when they're not enforcing the ones we have? I wish I could tell you the answer to that. I mean, the, the fact is, I think they just don't believe that law-abiding people ought to be able to own a firearm in this country. And yet most people in this country believe, hey, it's my freedom. You're not going to tell me whether I can own one or not. That's really what it comes down to. I also know that most of the people, I mean, Joe Biden, remember how he lectured Americans on gun control? I said at the time, hey, I'm not going to get lectured by a guy that spent his entire life being protected by taxpayer-funded security. It'll only affect the law-abiding. The criminals could care less. But I'll tell you what every police officer knows in this country and it's true, no matter what city you go to, no matter what state you go to, you want to stop crime in this country, take violent criminals off the street. That's the one thing that works. You know, the good thing about this whole issue is the strongest defense of this freedom is the marketplace. Every time one of these politicians gets out there and gets a lot of media in terms of trying to ban guns, you know what American people do? They buy firearms. They practice their freedom. And that sends a message like nothing else does. What we need to do with this 
election in 2016 is make those lines at gun stores, lines at polling booths. And if we do that, we'll take a huge step to save our freedom. So um, a few years ago, the Supreme Court um, said that the uh, Second Amendment right was an individual, automatic individual right for everybody. And now there seems to be more legal battles about it than there ever has been. So what, what's going on with that? Why is that? Well, because there's uh, politicians and the media and some on the Supreme Court want to say that that individual freedom that was clearly put there for the individual citizen is not the citizen's right, it's the government's right. That's what this battle is all about. That's why this upcoming election is so important. I mean, three, four Supreme Court appointments, you can kiss a lot of our freedoms goodbye and the Second Amendment's going to be one of them. So I don't think there's ever been more important election in the history of this country than the upcoming 2016 election. And it's important for all of us to go out and vote and defend that freedom. Because these freedoms we have as Americans, they're just words on a piece of parchment paper unless we go out and defend them. And there's never been a more important time to do it than this 2016 election. Yeah. My question is about the media. Why does the media seem to be against American gun owners and the Second Amendment? Is there any mainstream uh, journalist who doesn't support gun control? You know, because they're an elite. And one thing I've learned about the elite, they protect themselves. Take a look at New York City. In New York City, all the elites, you, you look at their permit system. If you're a celebrity, if you're a 300 hitter on the Mets, if you're a Wall Street executive, if you're a developer, if you're a friend of the mayor, you get your permit in New York City. We're about the average person in this country that has that same right to be protected that the elites do in this country. And no one defends that right like the National Rifle Association. <laughs> and I'll tell you why that's important. Because government doesn't stop crime in this country. The only time government stops it is it's lucky or coincidence. At the scene of the, it's true, at the scene of the crime, it's the criminal and the victim. Despite all the good intentions, the police, the prosecutors, the courts, they all come in later. Instant responders are better than first responders. When seconds matter, the police are minutes away. At the very root of American consciousness is I have a right to protect myself, and it's worth defending. And that's what we're doing every day. question is, gun advocates or gun control advocates have been saying that the, uh, the firearms have changed since the Second Amendment was first written. So it should be changed as well. Uh, what are your thoughts on that? You know, I have a real short answer for that one. People wanted to be free 200 years ago. They want to be free now. There were bad people 200 years ago. There are bad people now. And changes in technology don't change human behavior. And that's it. Yeah. I want to uh, talk about this green tip ammo, the, the 223 that uh, the ATF tried to ban. Yeah. And I know the NRA did a great job of stopping that. But can you explain the difference between the green tip and the regular ammunition? Yeah. I mean, let's start with there is none. I mean, the fact is, uh, under that definition of armor piercing, all rifle ammunition will meet that definition. Here's the thing with that whole issue. The Obama administration was grasping at straws. They hate the fact that law-abiding people can own firearms. They hate the Second Amendment. They can't win at the ballot box. They can't win in Congress. So one day they wake up and decide, we're going to do this by legislative fiat. Just impose it on the American public. It's kind of like a rabid dog approach. Bite whatever you can bite. It's commune ammunition. You and 100 million gun owners know that. It's no more armor-piercing than any other rifle round. All rifle rounds are armor-piercing. It's less powerful than most deer hunting rounds in this country. They're simply trying to rewrite the rules to ban ammunition. It's never been a problem for law enforcement. I really think a lot of it is they tried to ban ARs. They couldn't ban ARs. So they wake up one day and go, hey, we're going to ban AR ammunition. 
I watched them do it years ago when they tried to put all lead ammunition under the Consumer Product Safety Commission and banned it. And we stopped them then and we're gonna stop them now. <laughs> they just can't get it through their heads that the problem in this country is not guns, it's not ammunition. If they wanna send a message, send it to the career criminal or the gang member that wakes up every day and decides, I think it's a good idea to commit these horrendous crimes and shoot at police officers. The message you ought to be sending is, if you go into that career, we're gonna stop it. Yet the Obama administration has no intention of sending that message. Remember when they said that Americans cling to their Bibles and cling to their guns? Well, I think they're starting to learn, we're gonna cling to our freedom too, because that's what Americans do. Is there are a lot of Hollywood actors and musicians that are against guns, yeah. but they make their living off of movies and songs full of gun violence. Yeah. It seems a bit hypocritical. What do you say to this? Uh, you know, I shake my head all the time at that. When I'm sitting in a studio and being interviewed by some news anchor, I want to say, hey, you know, you want to talk about who's teaching America irresponsible use of firearms? Call your employer. I mean, it's Hollywood, it's the television industry, it's the gaming industry. We at the NRA spend millions teaching responsible use and safe use of firearms every day. The Hollywood, the media, the television industry, the gaming industry make billions every day by teaching irresponsible use. They jump on me when I say people around the country have a right to have firearms to defend themselves from murderers and rapists and robbers and all kinds of other people that do horrible things. And they jump all over me. And then they go on and make billions by depicting every evil act I just mentioned. Yes, sir. Okay. Evening, Wayne. I want to thank you for your leadership on these issues and defending the Second Amendment. But in some good news, I'm noticing in the news that a bill has been introduced in Congress looking to make permit holders for concealed carry in one state able to carry their firearms in all the other states. I wanna know, what do you think? Can it pass? I think we as Americans need to do everything we can to pass that bill. I mean, the trend toward empowering law-abiding people with firearms has been going on for years. We have the lessons of history on that. It's a good thing to do. It makes people safer. The people that get the permits have never been a problem. This takes the honest person from no chance, if the worst happens, to a fighting chance to survive. And that's what good people in this country want. The bad guys, they're already doing whatever they want, and they could care less what the law is. What Right to Carry does, and National Reciprocity does, is it simply allows the law-abiding people to defend themselves when they cross a state line. If you're a good person where you live, you're a good person when you cross that state line. If you're a bad person, you're doing whatever you want anyway, and you could care less what the law says. What people forget about all this whole discussion on gun control, it has nothing to do with criminals. It only has to do with the good guys. Gun control, in order to work, would have to require the criminals' cooperation. Guess what? <laughs> they don't cooperate. All it does is make the law books thicker. That's all it does. And that's why it fails time and time again. We have 20,000 gun laws on the books in this country already. It doesn't control the bad guys. Yes, sir. My question is about uh, assault weapons in particular. Uh, you, you keep hearing about additional restrictions and why isn't it acceptable to just to put a few more restrictions in place? Why do people need uh, weapons that are designed for soldiers to use them on the streets of the United States? Yeah, there's so much misinformation on that. I mean, well, let's start by, by the facts. I mean, you're talking about a cosmetic legislation, a one attachment ban. What they want to do is make it sound like they're talking about a firearm used by soldiers, when in fact, these are not. These are semi-automatic firearms. The performance characteristics of them are no different than the firearms they don't want to ban. 
They don't make bigger holes. They don't spray bullets. They're not weapons of war. They're not what our soldiers use. They're simply semi-automatic firearms that are no different than any other firearm they're not trying to ban. Why should I be limited to a six-shot revolver rather than semi-automatic technology? Or why should the government be able to tell me, hey, you can have three or seven or whatever Dianne Feinstein comes up with rather than what I need? Because I have determination to survive and I'm going to do it. And I don't need you, Mr. or Mrs. Politician, telling me what I can have to defend myself. Yes, sir. Hi, Wayne. I have a question about the UN gun ban treaty. Uh, my <laughs> understanding is that uh, President Obama has signed it, but the Senate has not ratified it. So is this an issue that we as gun owners need to be concerned with, or is this a dead issue? It's a big issue, and it's not going away. I mean, the UN's philosophy is only governments ought to be able to own guns, not individual citizens. I mean, it's a club of governments is what it is. You look at most of the killing done in the last century, and recently it's done by governments in that club. I mean, Russia, China, North Korea, Vietnam, East Timor, Pol Pot, Uganda, Rwanda, Syria going on right now. And the UN does a lousy job of stopping the killing if it takes place within the boundaries of one state. I mean, the UN's plan, I could go on all day about this, is the most extreme Im imaginable. It's give up your guns and give up your right to personal protection to the government, and the government's going to protect you. Well, I hate to tell them, but we believe the individual comes first. That's our sovereign. The UN, it's the government. It's also the most extreme imaginable to achieve that. They want to impose on people global agencies, tracking, monitoring, surveillance, supervision, all institutionalized within the bureaucracy of the United Nations, a permanent funding mechanism paid for by U.S. taxpayers, and a human rights violation if a country doesn't adopt it. Nowhere do I hear the U.N. talk about privacy, freedom, due process, individual rights, individual freedom. Nowhere do I hear the UN talking about arresting, prosecuting, incarcerating the bad guys. And nowhere do I hear the UN talking about how oppressed people can be liberated from dictators. The fact is, those are the facts. This freedom is about human worth, self-destiny, and dignity. And we're not going to let the UN take it away from us. The Constitution of the United States trumps a UN treaty. We better make sure we have a president that points the next three or four Supreme Court justices, because if that Supreme Court reverses the McDonnell and Heller decision and says it's the right of the government, not the individual citizen, then the Second Amendment of the Constitution does not trump a UN treaty. And that's a huge reason why this 2016 election is so important. I had a question on uh, stand your ground laws. Yes. Um, the media is portraying them like it's a license to kill. And I think the NRA supports them. What, uh, what's going on? Yeah, that, another issue distorted by the media. If your glass breaks at 2 a.m. in the morning, there's no more basic right than your right to defend yourself. It, it, what those laws simply say is the government is trying to put a, a form of hesitancy in. When it's all going to be over in a matter of seconds. Someone's going to be dead. Someone's going to be alive. So rather than defend your right to survive or defend your family, they want to put you through this moment of hesitancy. They want to impose a duty to retreat on you. Well, that's not what people in this country are for. That's why in Florida and throughout the country, people support the right of law-abiding citizens in that split second to make that instantaneous decision that lets them survive. This duty to retreat idea, Americans don't want to be told that in the scariest moment of their life, that they can't make that split second decision to defend themselves, that they have a duty to retreat. That's not what America wants. That's why we're winning this issue. It's distorted by the media. And it's why I don't think any candidate that tries to run on repealing stand your ground laws is going to do very well in the elections because the American public wants to be able to survive. And that's what that law is about.
We have a culture of leadership in this country right now that routinely lies on all kinds of fronts. Brian Williams, the border's more secure than ever. You can keep your health care. It's an epidemic of untruth at the highest levels of the country. I mean, we've come to a situation in this country where everybody gets up and spins this fabric of untruth. I believe with all my heart, the American public sits out there and goes, oh my God, it's got to stop. And yet when somebody does tell the truth, they get clobbered. It's all upside down. I mean, lies seem normal. The truth seem bizarre, like it's crazy talk. George Orwell said, the further you get from the truth, the more they hate the people that speak it. Yet that's where we're getting to in this country. And the media tries to tell us not what news is, but they try to tell us what to think. All of this is having a detrimental effect, a devastating effect on the kind of values, beliefs, and freedoms that this country was founded on. We face right now in this country a double-barrel threat. We have the last days of the Obama administration where he really does have a something rhymes with bucket list, as he said at the National White House Correspondents' Dinner, his own words, to change this country forever. It will be catastrophic what will happen to so many of our freedoms in this country if that happens. We can't afford to let it happen. For gun owners, it won't be a knock on the door. It will be a pounding on the door. But here's the good news. We can tip close elections. You've seen us do that over and over and over again. I know that you support a lot of organizations. If there's ever a time to support one organization, the NRA, it's now. I know you give your money to a lot of causes. If there's time to give your money to one cause right now, one organization, the NRA, it's right now. We have the will. We have the guts. We don't mind taking the flack to get this job done, to save our Second Amendment, to save our freedoms, and to save our country. We can do it with your help. I need you to join. I need you to contribute. I need you to get active, and I need you to vote because the future of the country is in your hands, and it's never been more important you meet that responsibility than now. Thank you very much. It's been great to talk with you. Thank you.